Welcome, everybody. Time to swim out into the waves. Join the sales pipeline. With your host, hey, today we got a guest host sitting in today, Robert Peace. He's been with us before. Hey, Robert. Hey there. How are you today? I'm good. Well, we're trying to do this on the fly here. We had a guest that got sick at the last minute, so Robert said he'd jump in and come up with a couple of topics we could talk about today here. And I believe it's two words that I rarely hear. I often hear thrown together, but I, I seldom see executed right. Predictable pipeline. Is there such a thing? There is indeed. At least that's what I'm going to speak to today. And, and great to be here. I always enjoy um, uh, having the opportunity to do these things. And Matt lets me grab the microphone. And great to sort of talk about this. Certainly timely as it relates to um, our own. Let me give you some insight today, kind of in how Heinz Marketing, uh, we're a you know a B2B sales and marketing consulting firm, uh, how we look at our customers and our market and, and what we deliver to them. And so the lens on that. Uh, is predictable pipeline, right? And so there's a lot of components to that. There's strategic pieces and there's some operational pieces. Um, it absolutely is something that no one would disagree that they want. <laughs> um, but I think that the um, the reality is that it, it often becomes um, elusive, if you will, uh, because of the pressures that are faced by marketers on a day-to-day basis, the salespeople, you know, and their quotas. Sometimes you just don't get, you can't step back far enough and sort of say, look, let me build a methodical and systematic approach to doing this um, so that everybody has, you know, the same expectations, right? I believe that uh, relationships, both professional and personal, are uh, defined by shared expectations. And I think that's an important thing um, for marketers, you know, VP marketing CMOs to to have within the organization. One of my favorite uh, quotes that came to me in one of various places I've worked over the years, um, one of the board members was sharing that they were talking about going to market and, and some of these things in the VP marketing the room said, look, you know, I may be wrong, but I'm not confused. <laughs> um, I like which that. I think is yeah, which I think is a lot of this, right? Which is, you know, there 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 are sometimes, especially if you're if you're making a bunch of assumptions or you're you're an earlier stage company or you're what it is, you know, you you don't know the outcome. You don't know if something's going to work. Um, but that's okay um, because you have to do these things to push the envelope or to break things every once in a while. But as long as you've got sound method and process and system behind it, um, and you don't go all in. <clears throat> um, and necessarily sort of fatally wound your organization by making a, a choice. I think that, that, that this is a really good approach um, to, uh, to do that. So I hear what you're saying, and it always resonates with me. Predictable pipelines and, and take risks and do stuff. Are those contradictory terms, the idea of predictability and the idea of risk-taking and try something new? Yeah, I, I think that's a good uh, a good point, right? And, and and not not trying to sort of I guess signal that. I, I think that the predictability of the pipeline has to be uh, aligned with the plan. And as we engage with companies, or you know, Matt and I sit down and and, and talk through this with with, with CEOs or, or business unit leaders or whatever it is, especially the VP marketing CMO, it's like, look, you know, have you have you built the, the marketing plan? Um, around the revenue plan. I mean, here we are. We're in the fourth quarter, right? Um, we got 2018 ahead of us, and plans are coming together if they're not already framed out. And so there's probably a lot of revenue objectives, you know, f- uh, flowing around out there. And then the question is, look, if we're planning on, you know, if we're planning on being up 15% next year and we think quarter over quarter we're going to grow at some uh, percent, um, the only way to achieve that systematically um, is with method and process, right? And so this is this is not doing a bunch of things new, right? This is sort of figuring out where that um, white paper project fits within the stack, where you know your 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 skill sets of your team and how they uh, need to be developed and enhanced um, potentially to take advantage of a new technology or a new a new technique. So to use Matt's favorite analogies, which are football or sports, if it's not (laughs) grilling, it seems to be football or sports here. Is this the blocking and tackling? There's always there's always the new Hail Mary plays or the new tricky plays you're trying to pull off that maybe nobody else was seeing coming that, that produce phenomenal results. But it starts with the basics with the blocking and tackling. 
Oh, absolutely right. I mean, again, you can see how many pithy quotes I can uh, insert into this today that, that, <laughs> right. that, that I won't reference because I don't know where I got them from. So <laughs> if you listen to this and you know who the source is, please correct me. Um, but I'm a big I'm a big fan of, you know, you plan the work and you work the plan. Right. Um, My father's you know, a favorite of, a one. A lot of this is just grinding out, right, doing the right things in the right order for the right amount of time. Um, you know, and, and, and I've got, uh, you know, a client that I'm working with now, and we're, we're sort of taking some shots into a market that we haven't been in before. There's very little to zero awareness of who we are and we believe we're relevant um, and so we're doing some things that are t- you know designed to sort of build attention and awareness and so that's content that shows up in places that our targets are, are, are reading uh, people that influence those targets are aware of who we are increasingly um, and then there's just sort of the direct outreach that is what sales is right that's that's knocking on doors that's 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 email campaigns and that's telephone and that's you know building a discipline around sales outreach uh, within there so yeah so this is um you know there is no sort of sort of magic here right or magic pixie dust often we we wish we had some of that and and again i I think that um you know the best projects that we do when we sit down and we we set expectations right everybody wants results tomorrow um but sometimes that's just not well oftentimes (laughs) Um, that type of sort of instant gratification is just not there, given complexity of businesses, given where markets are, given buying cycles. Um, so I think that all of that is is to say, you know, look, if we start with a revenue plan and we know where we're trying to be next year, all of the th- things we have, the resources, the activities, the projects, the investments um, need to unify around that, which is the goal, which is then, again, to build a predictable pipeline. Okay. So you talked about expectations. We're enter- you enter into an expectation with your clients. Uh, we enter into expectations with our staff. What is a reasonable expectation? How do you not set the expectations unreasonably? Oh, how do you, sure. how, how yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. to do? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, um, you know, and, I, and I've, I've done this in, in several cases where, you know, there's like, hey, you know, come in, we really need to accelerate, you know, basically we need more customers. Yeah, and, everybody and, wants uh, that. And we want them tomorrow. <laughs> and we want them, a lot of them. And, and so then it's a question the staff says, well, we can't do that or this and this. And there's all these reasons and excuses and we can't do this. And can't. So how do you find that middle ground between aspirational and, mm-hmm. and uh, a real, uh, as you say, a, a, a reasonable expectation? Yeah, I, I well, in 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 some cases, right? You just go to numbers, right? I'm like, okay, here's the plan. Great, this is you think you're going to have you know ten customers in October, ten in November, ten in December. Your sales cycle is four months, right? Uh, the deals that you're expecting and forecasting for revenue in October, November, December have to already be in your pipeline as opportunities. So anything we add to that is going to basically yield um, next year. Right. Right. And so 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 what happens is, again, I, I, I'm 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 unemotional about the numbers. Right. Even if they're scary or if they're wrong or if they're like doom and gloom, which you have to see that you now need to create 10,000 leads in, in the next 30 days. Yeah, right. Well, then that frames the challenge, which is like, OK, um, that, wow. will, maybe that's, <laughs> that will be difficult. But then let's make sure that we've got the, the right tactical things in place to, to begin to build towards that. Right. So it's, you know, don't don't uh, you know, don't admit defeat uh, immediately, but just sort of look at the scale of what you're trying to do. And it's, it's surprising to me as we as we get into this and you begin to talk about you do the math backwards from from the from the customer count or from the revenue and you begin to talk about conversion rates throughout the funnel. Right. And, and this then gets into and unpacks things around lead and lead qualification. You know, someone who comes to your your your, your website and downloads a white paper. Paper, you know, that's a content lead. That's not that's not remotely sales qualified. And so, if you don't look at it, they're important because that's someone leaning in, interested in the topic, interested in what you have to do. Um, but that person's not going to convert into an opportunity in most cases without a handful more touches, right? And so, it's just about being programmatic around that. So, so much to unpack there. Uh, let's let's go back to my first point here. Everybody wants to grow. And the uh, people who own the company or the stockholders or the shareholders or the stakeholders, whatever you want to call them, they all want to see it grow as big as it can. Mm -hmm. And then there seems to be a pushback from the people who go out there and say, whoa, 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 you know, I'm all for growth. But, hey, you know, let's get real here. Let's go. We we can't double in our sales next year. We can't do that much growth. And so there's this pushback, this negotiation. Should there be a negotiation or should they just pick an aspirational number and shoot for it? Or should it have some basis in reality? Yeah, well, you know, again, back to you. Like, there's a lot in there to unpack. And sometimes, right. um, you know, expectations are set outside of 
the uh, zone of responsibility of the person who's responsible for marketing. In other words, are you setting thing. yourself up to fail? If I just say, yeah, well, yeah, damn I it, we're so, all going right? to double. You, you, yeah, you yeah. want to be aggressive, right? And, and I think that, that if you ever make your number, you don't say, great, that was great. Let's let's just stay, stay right here. You're like, oh, wow, we made it. So clearly we didn't set the goal high enough. Right. Um, you know, I think that, that um, the – you know, as we, as we get into this, and I'll go back to kind of predictable pipeline, and I'm right. going to talk about two areas, right? Strategic and operational. And there's the, the components that are in the strategic part of this are the market, are the message, the offering, right? Those are things that are foundational to success, right? If you right. if you don't know who you're selling to, and you don't know that there's a market or that there's a need in the market for what you sell, that's gonna that's gonna wound you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, or if you don't, so, or if you don't sell a good so if you're not honest and say we well, don't make as good a widget as the next guy here. Yeah, right, right. And so those things become, you know, again, it, marketing as an investment in a business uh, is a is an investment to scale. Um, right, and that's a good way I to put that. You, I like that. Yeah, when you throw capital um, at companies um, or or groups within companies where maybe stuff isn't all figured out, what it's going to do is amplify all the bad stuff. Yes. Right. I was, if you got it all figured out, it'll amplify the good stuff. I always remember the story that uh, I, I, I've quoted through the years. I, I read, this goes back a few years, but uh, I think it was Planet Hollywood was opening up locations left and right. The problem was they were losing money every time they opened a location. But they're a publicly traded company who wanted to show growth. So their sales were growing, and so were all the problems. They were amplifying all the problems every time they opened a new store. They hadn't fixed the problem. They just kept adding to the problem. Yeah, it becomes a little bit of a house of cards, right? That, right. That's exactly. where you're like, hey, you know, we're, we're acquiring customers left and right. Look at our customer count growth. But there's a mismatch between what we're selling and what we deliver. Right. And what if, if those customers are churning out or canceling contracts within two to three months? And so you literally just have this, you know, very leaky funnel. Yes, um, right. You know, that, that those are metrics that aren't really core to the sort of creating value in the business, right? And, and so that's another piece of predictable pipeline is measurement, right? Which is, you know, there are sort of, there are performance metrics that matter. The, we, we, we've gotten into this world now um, in, in, in marketing, right, where we've, we've, we've instrumented and we've got data and we've got numbers. And, and man, sometimes you walk into organizations and they are, they are measuring things that don't matter <laughs> it, it, it from, from a from a from a step back standpoint i mean they're important they're 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 activity measures and they're whatever but but ultimately this is about you know finding customers at uh, attractive economics yeah. uh, you know closing deals that allow you to be profitable as a company not overspending to acquire that customer that you can't get paid back within a, a reasonable time period and it's not about you know mql creation or whatever it's about opportunities right i, I mean, thought it's about we, big we, data it's about collecting as much data about every point in the process as we can we need big data i need more data it's well and so here's herein lies the right and we have a lot of data, but even take attribution. Um, so Brian Hansberg is part of the team at Heinz is, is, is working through and rolling out a service line around marketing performance management. And it's awesome, uh, first and foremost. So highly uh, recommend uh, digging into that a little bit. But it, but it, it attacks attribution. And the, the, that's just kind of a hairball, right? Because it's like you know, hairball. <laughs> You're coming up with some great terms here today. <laughs> I got to cough that up. When, when guests cancel, you get you get me and all my colloquialisms. Um, but it's like you know. So sometimes organizations, it's like you know, marketing be like, oh, we closed a deal. Look at that. That's our customer. And then someone over on the sales development team is like, bull, right? I I called that person, right? You created a, a white paper lead six yeah. months ago. They went cold, and I did a call down. Yeah. So. You know, really goes back to like, um, you know, again, we got into this conversation with a, with a client, which is like, you know, I want to understand, you know, marketing sourced revenue, right? Or marketing attributable revenue. And to me, in my mindset, back to the sort of scaling thing is the marketing investment is designed to enable the sales process. So separating those, trying to say this is marketing source revenue and this is sales source revenue, to me just doesn't pencil, yeah. right? Um, you know, it's, it's again, it's back to being well instrumented and dialed in and understanding. But if, but if the marketing stance and posture is um, to enable the sales process, to remove friction wherever there is in the sales process, um, you know, to deliver, right, and, and, and focus and accountability around opportunity creation, um, then, then you get a lot of uh, a lot better alignment. All right. Well, we're going to try and align this to something tangible here. We've been wandering through all the different hurdles and obstacles and objections. Now you're going to come back after the break and give us some strategic. And what's the other one? You had two terms. Yeah, right? just strategic and, and operational. Right, the operational thing I'll dig into next year. All right. Well, let's take that on as a challenge right after we hear a word from our sponsors. <laughs> 
Is your content showing less than stellar performance? Is it not bringing in the return you hope for? It might be time to revitalize your content marketing engine. Get the recording for the Modern Marketers Workshop, Content That Converts, and start creating content that makes a visible impact on your pipeline. A fully online, on-demand workshop that includes an interactive workbook, the presentation slides, and templates, all for $195. Don't reinvent the wheel. Instead, visit www.heinzmarketing.com slash workshops. That's H-E-I-N-Z marketing.com. And spice up your content marketing plan now. All right, and after you spice up the content marketing, let's put it into a pipeline here. So go. you got 10 minutes here to tell us about uh, pipelines and how to turn them into a process and predictable uh, process here. Uh, at the goal of all this discussion is to do this. And, again, it's, it's, not, a, uh, you know, it's not something you pull out of a box and, and sort of set up. I think there's a lot of pieces to this. You know, we talked about the strategic elements of this, but if you don't spend time on – market message offering, right, the things that you're measuring, even your team and team structure, you, you, the, 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 the amount of friction and, 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 and process uh, uh, inefficiency that happens because of mismatched compensation and incentives is huge. Right. Um, and it's important to sort of layer that in people, you know, people respond to their incentive plans. Right. And so if my goal is to create leads and there's no real definition around that. I'm going to by God, I'm going to create a bunch of leads. Amen. See it all the uh, time. My, my goal isn't to make sales. My goal is to make leads. You go make the sales. That's exactly right. And so I think that, and again, that this is back to to people sort of, you know, letting go a little bit and sort of unifying. Again, your, go, your job is to create opportunities. The reason there's an investment in marketing, the reason there's marketing staff, there's a reason there's marketing budget and programs and all that stuff is to is to scale the business. So those strategic parts have to be um, have to be dialed in, right, and have to be addressed and have to be confirmed. And if there's assumptions around certain pieces of that, this customer behavior, this customer need, you just got to articulate them. So then what happens is we can drop into operational pieces. And the operational pieces here, this is what we already do, right? This is programs and content and technology. But if you don't frame it around sort of strategic purpose, if you will, you end up with random acts of marketing. Right, you end up with um, hey, not random acts of kindness, random acts of marketing here. Right? Yeah, that, and that's a, that's a Matt Hinesism, uh, which I think is appropriate because then all of a sudden it's like, my God, we got to start doing stuff, right? We're behind. Oh yeah. my God, look at this revenue plan. Holy crap, you know we're we're behind and we got to create all these leads. And then there's no sort of like unified plan around it, right? There's no method and there's no purpose. The other one he says all, all the time that I love is the arts and crafts department. So we just call yeah. the arts and crafts department to make something cute, send it out, and they've done their job, right? Right, right. And so this is where this is, you know, as we were taught, we did a, a workshop the last couple of days um, at Heinz, and we're talking about, um, you know, perfect is the enemy of done. <laughs> and so this this notion of building sort of a uh, hurry up, back to football references, right? Hurry up right. audience, right? This is a hurry up market, hurry up marketing that you can do. And so instead of a, a program taking six months to come to fruition, we can design something, launch something, and execute something within weeks. Uh, decide whether or not it worked or didn't work and actually double down on it. If it did, if not, then we haven't wounded ourselves uh, by wasting all our money and we move on to the next thing. And you can do that if you've got a good frame around the strategic pieces of this, right? So, so you know, in the operational bucket are programs like lead gen, right, events, you know, inbound marketing, account-based marketing, SEO, social, inside sales, right, all these things that people do um, that a lot of times aren't sort of coordinated or unified. Um, you know, the, the whole notion of, of us having a conversation yesterday with a company that they, they really thought they needed to increase their SEO, right? They want to be optimized. They want to be found. Um, they have a very defined target market, right? They have a very defined set of criteria that, that defines a qualified opportunity, right? They have to have a certain profile. They have to be of a certain size. They have to have a certain uh, software infrastructure for this product to work there. So optimizing to be found could potentially create a bunch of noise, because yeah. if all of a sudden there's all this inbound interest because people are loving it and you then have to qualify all that out, then SEO is not the place to be spending time. Mm-hmm. You need a much more discipline as we've as we've worked through this. Wow, uh, that's a fascinating because that's that's when you just assume everybody wants more people to find them. Well, not if they're the wrong people finding you and wasting your time. Exactly, right? So then you think about what account-based marketing is or account-based anything, everything or whatever the phrase is these days. Yeah. That's just that's just an int- that's just intentional and that's a target. That's like I only care about these 2,000 companies. Now, I want the people from those 2,000 companies to come to my website. But what I've done is I've qualified all my qualification criteria is in my targeting, right? Not between sales and marketing, and then there's going to be discussion of what's qualified and what's not. So the tactics that you're doing, um, 
you know, unify those sort of programs and those tactics, but again, sort of driven by the sort of strategic uh, pieces that you've got in place. Um, and then again, part of pro- programs and, and, and other pieces are content, right? I mean, everyone knows they need content, and then I, I see so many companies that just sort of get paralyzed because they they nobody can write. Well, there's a lot of ways to, to, to do content, right? You can certainly, you know, hire someone to help you with that. You can do other things. Do what uh, we're doing today. Just talk and talk to people and right. capture so, it so, and so record that's exactly it. Yeah. The, that's a very, very good point, which is if you're in a business and your business solves a problem, you arguably should know something about the problem. So just find outlets to share your knowledge of that problem. Right. And whether that's a conversation like this, uh, whether that's, you know, go hire a, a copywriter and sit down and, and explain the problem and they can put the words on paper, you know, or hire a third party firm to sort of do a Let's let's say do a study. Uh, we do this at Heinz all the time. Right. We, we are able to do custom research where, you know, generally through like a, a sales or a marketing technology vendor um, wants to get sort of the pulse about a certain issue. Um, and we can put that out there to our audience and then people respond and we get, you know, we're not a research house per se, um, but, but but that becomes a really insightful body of knowledge because we have a very focused audience around b2b sales exactly but what i'm still missing here Mm -hmm. in the last couple minutes is how do i turn it into a process how do i make it predictable process like brushing my teeth my people do it every day just out of habit here yeah i I think the um so those are so so if we if we line the strategic parts up right and then we know we have these sort of operational things that we do and again that's not new stuff that we're doing it's just aligning it back in that right to make it predictable is looking at the output, right? Which is, are we generating more opportunities, right? Is the quality of the lead going up? What are our conversion rates? Are we actually increasing those conversion rates? I mean, you'd need to be, mon- you know, this way, let's say focused, not maniacal, but focused on where in your process you can increase conversion rates. So it's not just lead to deal, right? There's all these intermittent steps. And if you can, you know, if you can move a, a, um, a conversion rate from, you know, from sort of, uh, uh, you know, cold contact to engaged contact by a, by two or three percentage points, right, that ripples all the way down through the yeah, tunnel, right. right? Or even if we take it from, you know, active conversation to, to opportunity, like figure out how the friction is, 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 uh, is impacting that. And so, what benefits is, I mean, it's quite possible that you're always going to close one out of four deals, right? One out of four opportunities closes. Let's say that's up 25%. So how then do you focus on generating more opportunities? Well, what's the stage before opportunity? So those are, that's about predictability, right? So what's happening is you're sort of you're sort of um, um, you're sort of managing this uh, this living and breathing uh, entity, right? Which is your your broader sort of demand generation engine, um, and, and and bring that in there. And then you know a, a lot of uh, of this, I think, also back to X expectations is to explain what you're doing and how you're doing it right um like it or not most people believe they they understand marketing most people have an opinion <laughs> right of that you sit around a, t- a room and you, of course you know i don't have an opinion on accounting because i don't do accounting but the accountant for the controller the cfo <laughs> yeah, certainly right. has an opinion that is a great marketing. point nobody sits around the table and says you know i think i got a better way to uh to calculate our uh deductions or something here right but yeah, everybody exactly. in the room from the secretary on to the ceo has got an idea how to get in front of more people and get more leads and close more exactly. deals exactly everybody's got an opinion on it and so you know we, we were in a, uh, a a meeting or a work session you know, some time ago and kind of walking through similar sort of okay like, hey, this is what we'll do and this is how and this is how the sort of predictable pipeline thing works and you know the the, the technical uh ceo you know engineering sort of focus person like yeah we know all that <laughs> oh, okay right. okay well then do it yeah right just simple uh, and and so, i think that's the the failure because and i'll say the do it for two reasons one it's hard to stay with something on a predictable basis. It's hard to get into a habit of brushing your teeth every day. Once you do, it becomes easy, but it's hard to make it a habit. It's easy to get caught up in, I know we got to do this, but boy, we got a fire raging over here. we got a customer problem over here. we got a production problem over here, and everybody races to put out the fire, and they and immediately stops putting stuff into the pipeline here. You know, yeah, everything stops. super reactive, right? right. And, and again, this is like a, a back to pithy sayings, you know, if you if you spend your life you know, running from risk, it's going to find you. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I've never heard that one. That's a good one. Uh, and so, like, if you know the revenue plan is far out ahead of what the demand generation plan can support, the longer you ignore that, the worse your job is going to yeah. be. Um, you know, and I'm not saying to go in and say we have to change the plan. I think it's just sort of shining a light on certain certain assumptions in certain areas 
that are like, well, you know, here's the here's you know here's here's the, the risk in our business plan. Um, whether that's uh, we think we can grow faster than we have shown historically, that we are uh, not a, we're not putting the resources in place to support the growth that we're expecting, um, and a variety of other things. Well, and I think the other problem is not just making it predictable, not just making it a process, a habit, something people do. No matter what the time of day, no matter the time of season, no matter what else is happening in the company, these are the things you're doing predictably every day to put stuff in the pipeline, to advance the pipeline, to to make it like a machine. So it just keeps predictably producing output and results here. But the other problem I always say is that it's a linear process. So after all this effort, it's like the old Christmas tree lights when I was a kid. One bulb goes out and the whole light goes out. I mean, the whole string goes out, right? So one step failure kills 20 good steps of process yeah it can i mean i think that that it goes back to putting all your eggs in one basket right if you're just doing one thing Mm -hmm. um then then yeah the the output is or the outcome is binary (laughs) right um you know versus layer i mean this is why i think about it like layers of of demand generation and that's everything from how am i going to create awareness and surround a prospect to how am i going to directly interact with that prospect to how am i going to address the influencers that impact that prospect how do i take my sort of unique knowledge that I have, whether that's, you know, unique point of view, industry, customer uh, viewpoints, whatever they are, and, and get all those things out there, right? So if, if, if we just did one customer case study and we put all our eggs in that basket and it was like, we're going to write this up and we're going to email it one time to our prospect database. And boy, is it going to produce great results here. Right. That, that, is, that is an event right. uh, as part of a broader process. And so that's a – the step back is we're going to really you know, define and refine our message around customer success stories. The key takeaway – I always talk to companies about this. I'm like, you got all these case studies. Like, what's the headline? Hmm. Like, what did they get? Did they save money? Did they did they uh, did they make money? Right? Did it did it uh, did they get an award? I mean, those are the sort of tangible things that sort of come out of this. And then where that fits in the broader message is okay. So what we want to do is we're going to do you know a legion program where we're going to be featuring that case study. It's also going to include a webinar where that person is going to come. And so there's like this three or four touch type process. That's the systemic part of this. You know what um, I learned today here? I learned that one, we can't tell this all in a half an hour, and yeah, two, a lot. that we need help. You know, as much as we think we know, everybody's got an opinion on how to do this. It's like the weather, you know, but nobody ever does anything. Everybody's got to love everybody. Let's talk about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. We need to do something about it. And I think it starts with getting some professional guidance and help from people like you. So how do they find you if they want to learn more? Yeah, so just go to the, the Heinz, uh, Heinz Marketing website, um, HeinzMarketing.com. My email address is Robert at HeinzMarketing.com. Uh, we do this, right? We do everything from sort of advisory level engagement where we sort of help sort of at a high level um, all the way down to we do this for you, right? So even, you know, think about outsourcing this engine. Um, you know, we've seen a lot. We've been in business eight plus years, you know, 200 plus uh, B2B companies. Um, a lot of the similar challenges across those, but we, you know, we constantly benefit from an increasing pool of knowledge of our team. All right. Um, yeah. well, we're going to have to leave it there. we got another show after this, but thank you so much, Robert Peace, for talking about at least opening our eyes the possibility of predictable pipelines. Thanks so much. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks. You've been listening to Sales Pipeline Radio, brought to you by the good folks at Matt Hines Marketing, right here on the Funnel Radio Channel for at-work listeners like you. 